Hey guys, welcome back to another Hot Trades video. Over the last three years, we've mainly focused on live streams. So from market open to market close. So these streams are really long, right? Uh, seven hour streams, five hour streams, six hour streams. So then I tend to answer the same questions over and over because it's difficult for someone to maybe go back and watch a seven hour stream just to get that five minute clip of information that they might need, right? So the whole idea behind these videos is for me to maybe look at some of these more commonly asked questions and do a five minute video, a 10 minute video. Um, so you can go back and watch until you understand what you need to understand, right? So in this video, what I will focus on is the pre and post market sessions, right? So specifically what to do when a stock has a catalyst, right? So whether that's in the morning or after the market closes, when that news drops, right? What do you do with that news, right? And how do you play that stock, right? Is what I'm gonna focus on, right? So this is a typical list of a pre-market, a pre-market list, right? So, uh, and some of these stocks are up 200%, 70%, it really doesn't matter to me, right? What I will focus on is what to do when that news drops, right? So, and the angle that I'm gonna come from uh, with this is the technical angle. Why? Because again, I think 99% of the time when news drops, it's really difficult to understand, right? If you think about it, the way you understand the catalyst is really by digging into that industry. So let's say a stock A has a catalyst, right? And they say, okay, we have the cure to, rubbishness really doesn't matter right so we have the cure to rubbishness what then you have to do to really understand that catalyst is maybe go back and say okay you know what is there another company that has the cure to rubbishness right and how much revenue can then can they make from the cure of rubbishness right and how much does that compare to the market cap right um and so you really have to look at things like that and by the time you're done doing that research the stock might be gone already right so what i will really focus on is again the technical angle ang angle because then you can maybe ignore the catalyst some like some stocks will have news that stands out to you right if, a, if company a says you know what we have this combination or we have this we have a merger we have you know what i'm trying to say right so when we have we have this news this partnership with an amazon with a tiktok with a google stuff like that stands out and it's easy to understand and it, it's easy for you to look at that catalyst and say oh yeah i'm going to jump into this because it's amazing news right but very rarely does it make sense very rarely so let's take a look at a few examples what I, again what i'm going to look at here is a few stocks that have done really well to see what they have in common, right? So this is one of the stocks that rallied a few days ago. Uh, take a symbol, Sarah, S-E-R-A, right? So just by looking at this headline, this makes no sense to me at all, nothing. I have no idea what they're going to do in terms of revenue. I have no idea what, you know, what sector this is in, um, right? So then I don't really care. It doesn't mean the stock can rally though, right? So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the headline, right? And then I will see what the reaction to the headline is, right? So there's news and there's reaction. To me, what's more important is the reaction to the news, right? So if a company says we have the cure to cancer, obviously that's really amazing, right? But if the, if the market does not care, neither do I from a, from a financial point of view, right? So, um, right, so again, there's news and there's reaction. And I really care about the reaction. In order for me to make money, there has to be a reaction. There has to be a group of other people willing to buy this stock for me to make money from the stock, right? So then that reaction becomes very, very important. Right. So again, take a symbol. S-E-R-A says, OK, we have this news. And I say, OK, that's cool. What do I do with this? I go to the chart and look at the chart. Right. So my advice for everybody with stocks like this is there usually will be an initial reaction. Right. That initial push. What I want you to do or what I like to focus on is ignoring that initial reaction. Right. So because, again, usually in the morning or in the post market, you have a list of 10 different names dropping news. Right. Then my question becomes, OK, which is going to be the one that rallies and goes on? Right. So another thing you have to understand is retail. Right. The market is 80 percent psychological. Right. So if, if I look at it from that point of view, then I understand that, OK, I really need to understand. I really need to understand what other people are thinking. Right. So to me, that's where this comes into play. So if I'm looking at this stock, what I usually advise people to do is ignore this initial reaction. If it's amazing news and you can catch it from the bottom, go for it, right? What I like to do is I will ignore this initial reaction. What I'm then looking for at that point is to see if that stock has the momentum to come back, 
right? And break above the previous high. So when we have this initial pump, what I will do is I will go on my charts and mark the highs of the day, right? The higher pre-market, the higher post-market, right? So once we have this initial reaction and we're selling off like this, if I see that we have a really good consolidation area, maybe I will think about it right? But what I'm looking for is I'm looking for that second rally, that second wave, because when that second wave comes, it will then take everybody's attention from all the other stocks that are pumping at that point, right? So if I look at this again, I mark my initial high and I say, okay, well, I don't really care for the sell-off, right? I don't really care for the sell-off unless again, like I said, we have some really good consolidation, right? What I'm looking for at this point is to see when we come back and break above the previous high, Right. So as we come back up, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for this area to be broken. Why? Because we failed in this area once and went down. We're retesting that area for the second time. I kind of need to see this area be broken. It has to be a candle that fully closes above the price. Right. So what you can do is you can keep note of the exact price and say, OK, well, the last time we rallied, we failed at ten dollars. Right. So if we're rallying for the second time, I need to make sure the candle actually closes above ten dollars. If it doesn't, then it's a scam. Alrighty. So if I move all the way to the to the right hand side, what am I what am I looking for? I'm looking for that breakout. So with this candle closing above that initial area, that's what I'm looking for. That's my signal. That's my go signal. Hey, it's time to FOMO. It's time to educate it FOMO. Right. So and if I do that, I also need to understand that okay, I'm taking a bigger risk. I'm buying at the highs of the day potentially. What I need to do at this point is the markets are like a, a big part of the market, right, is protecting your money, right? Cutting those losses really quickly. So if I'm willing to buy the stock at the highs of the day because the candle closed above the previous two highs, what I need to do is make sure that I get rid of it immediately if we go back below this level. We are not allowed to go back below that breakout zone, right? Once we get above that level, you're not allowed to go back below that level. And then the stock proceeds to rally and rally and rally. So it's done really well, right? And you can you can look at this exact same stock and you can go back as you can you can you can look at the stock and you can go to the right hand side and this same pattern happens over and over. So let's say I put another circle right there, right? And I move my 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 chart all the way to the right hand side. When we break above that resistance and we close above it, that's a signal for another huge rally. Right. So technically what you're doing is you're playing the breakouts. Right. So, again, you understand that you're taking a bigger risk by buying at the highs of the day. But you also need to make sure that you get rid of it if it breaks above that level, closes above and then comes back below. Right. So that's one example. Right. Let me look at another stock here. So MLGO. Right. Micro algo shares are more, are more than double based on, again, just by looking at this headline. That makes no sense to me. Right. I have no idea what 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 type of revenue what type of revenue they might make from a headline like this or from a drug like this, right? So so then it really doesn't matter to me, right? So what I'm focused on is the technicals, right? So if I go over to the chart, what am I looking for? I will say, you know what, right? This is the high. We have we seem to have a lot of resistance in this area, right? So what am I looking for? I'm looking for that stock to go all the way up to this level, break above and close above it, right? So you can, you can actually see that we closed on this initial candle, right? There we closed the candle. The next two candles were green, right? So if we go below this level, you have to get rid of it. Why? Because again, there's just not enough momentum to keep it above that resistance, right? If I move my chart a little bit further to the right hand side, you can see a proper breakout, right? So we come back, we broke, we close above that level, and then we actually rallied. Another thing you can wait for is you can wait for the retest of the breakout zone. So if we break above and we come back and retest this level, that's a signal that my initial rally from the catalyst has become a new base, right? Does that make sense? Okay, good. I like how I'm asking myself questions, you know? So that's that's example number two, right? They basically have the same commonalities, right? If I look at the third example, right? Save foods, targeting U.S. carbon credit market with, uh, right? So to me, this doesn't exactly make sense when I see it, right? So then I run immediately to the chart and say, okay, you know what? This is my initial rally. My initial rally, right? These massive candles. Another thing that you really have to focus on is, I would focus on the area where you have more candles failing at. So it's not about the tippity tippity top of the candle itself. It's more so about the area that I see more candles failing at. So if I notice that I have more candles failing in this area, that's the, that's the area I want to focus on.
right? So again, this is the news. This is the initial reaction to the news, that immediate catalyst pump, and this is the resistance. Once we're getting those initial sell-off candles, right, I will now go and say, okay, this is the level that we struggled at for the most part, right? More candles equals more confirmation. So if we fail in this area, that's the level that I want to focus on the most instead of the high wick, right? So well, as we're closing above this level, right, as we're closing above that initial breakout zone, then I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, you know what, we're closing above, right? If it's a massive green candle, what I like to wait for sometimes is I will wait for the breakout and the retest of the breakout zone, right? So again, you either look at this level and you say, okay, we broke above that initial catalyst uh, high, right? And I took a position and I'm going to make sure that every candle stays above this level. Every candle closes above that level or I will wait for the retest of the breakout zone, right? And then we rally and then we push and then we push. Now you can almost see the same thing happening here, right? As we hit new highs and we sell off, I would avoid, if, you missed, if you've missed the initial rally, instead of trying to jump in at a random level, what I will do is again, rally 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 what i would advise to do is let it sell off Alrighty, let it sell up you can catch a curl at some point if you see consolidation and you can, you can see that it's starting to go back up sure maybe take a position right or the other thing you can do is you can go back and mark your high and say okay you know what we had a lot of resistance in this area if in the future we're able to come back and break above that level that's my signal Right. Like I said earlier, understanding the psychology of retail is really important. Right. Retail would much rather buy a stock that's exploding than buy a stock that's sitting flat. Right. So that's where these breakouts come into play. Right. That's why you see when a stock breaks above a specific resistance, there's a massive reaction. Right. Because you have algorithms, you have retail waiting on the sideline to jump in at this breakout. You've now broken out of the previous range. You're in a new range and you're expecting more of a rally. Right. So again, you mark that resistance on the left hand side and then you go to the right hand side and say, OK, this potentially is my signal. This is my goal level. What happens when we when we break above that resistance, guys? We go boom skis. Right. We go boom skis. Right. So now as the day goes on, another thing you can pay attention to is you can say, you know what? This is the level that we seem to really be struggling at. Right. To me, it's not important to look at the very tippity top of the candle, like the very tippity top of the wick, right? The area of failing is more important than the highest of highs, right? So if we're failing more so in this area, this is the level that I need to be aware of. As the stock is dropping, you can maybe catch a curl or what you can wait for is you can mark that level on the left-hand side, go to the right-hand side and wait, right? You wait, you wait, and it never gets there. Oh, well, too bad. Right. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense, guys. A little bit of sense. Right. So, again, just a quick recap. When we do these, we, you know, when you're looking at these names in the morning. Right. I would try not to predict what you think the stock is going to do based on the catalyst. Right. I want you to listen to the candles in a sense. Right. Let them prove themselves to you. Right. Wait for that momentum. Try not to jump in immediately if you've missed that initial rally. Again, if you can see that it's a good catalyst because it's a name that's connected with another big name and or is big revenue some of these some of these some of these companies will have a revenue uh, a revenue number attached to the headline right so and if that's maybe more than the market cap and then that's amazing but if it's not if you can catch if you can catch the news early on sure maybe right but if you miss that initial pop i would advise you to wait for the second wave and to me for the most part the second wave is way better than the initial wave, right? So because now you have people looking at this name and saying, yes, I understand that there's 10 other names running in pre-market or after market, right? But this is the name that's breaking out. And then all the money rotates to this one name. And then you're looking at the stock that's up 200%, 300%. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Uh, don't forget to smash a like if, you, uh, if you've enjoyed the content. Leave a comment. Let me know what you would like for me to cover on the next topic already. And uh, see you guys on stream. Bye.